From the oil space, now let's see what's happening in a commodity space. Amid the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict, a global commodity super cycle has been seen. Many commodities have hit their highs. Maize is among that. The price of maize has spiked by 30% year-to-date and 104.5% over the past two years. And Ukraine is the sixth largest producer of exporter of maize in the world in the going year. It's uh, produced 42 million metric tons. Well, we have uh, joining us now from Financial Derivatives uh, to tell us uh, what this would mean to Nigeria and, of course, some other African countries. Um, hello. So uh, in what ways can import-dependent countries hedge against the supply shortfall that will be created by this conflict? Thank you very much for having me today. Um, yeah, as regards how import dependent countries can mitigate against um, this supply shortfall, it's a very dicey one because um, we know for a fact that um, products like maize, wheat, nickel that um, Ukraine produces and supplies and supplies the world's um, supply chain um, are also products that Russia also has um, an interest in, they also have um, a comparative advantage in, the, in those commodities as well. So um, in the sense that to the extent that um, other countries might not be able to get their supply from Ukraine at the moment, we might also see um, Russia wanting to weaponize its own supply. Um, and therefore it's, all, 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 it's going to cause some sort of scarcity and there's almost no way really to or mitigate against this. Of course, uh, we might end up seeing import-dependent countries pivot um, transition and see um, them go to other suppliers of these same products. Um, and we're, we're also going to see that there will all, all, there, there's going to be some price increases ultimately, and it's not going to be good for these import-dependent countries. But to the extent that um, there is currently this um, conflict between Russia and Ukraine, then it's going to be hard for import-dependent countries to actually mitigate against um, price increases or this supply shortfall. There's going to be some scarcity either way. Yeah, obviously. Well, Shay, maize is an important raw material for feedstock, uh, the production of ethanol. The global demand for industrial ethanol has grown steadily in the recent years. How do you think this surge in ethanol demand will impact dynamics of the maize market in Nigeria, especially at a time like this when Ukraine cannot contribute its quota to the global supply. Yes, we should we should note. We, I mean, it basically goes back to the rules of um, economics, demand and supply, increased um, demand for a particular product from which uh, we also get ethanol will subsequently lead to an increase in prices. And subsequently, if there's going to be, if there's a supply shortfall, then of course it's even going to cost um, even more um, increase in prices. So, and um, to the extent that Nigeria um, has a comparative advantage in this regard, um, the U.S. Um, Department of Agriculture um, estimated that um, we, we produce about um, the, we're the 14th largest producer of uh, maize in Africa in 2019, 2020. So, of course, this this sees us in a very good position. The problem, however, is that. We haven't even met our local demand in terms of food, in terms of um, um, feed, um, feed, animal feed for our, our poultry. So, of course, as long as there's that demand shortfall, then it's going to be incredibly hard for Nigeria to even um, look at these other places. And also, um, in so doing, we might not necessarily be able to um, position ourselves to benefit from this sort of thing. But, I mean, ultimately, if we have a capacity, we increase our capacity to um, meet our local demand, then we can begin to look at um, ethanol production and supplying means for ethanol production to other people across the globe. Yeah, and then just before we let you go, there seems to be a wide uh, variation between the price of maize and food inflation. Is there a way to explain this? Okay, yes. Ultimately, I think we, we need to look at the composition of the CPI basket. Now, um, we know that food uh, makes up about 51% of our CPI basket, and we need to look at how much of a contribution maize um, has to that CPI basket. If it's a very small proportion, then 
I mean, whatever increase it is, if there's a small proportion of maize compared to other food products um, in the food um, basket, in the food component of the CPI basket, then of course, um, it's going to be, I mean, whatever price, price increases you see in maize will be quite, will be masked compared to um, the, the contribution of other food products. So basically that's where we need to look at um, and ultimately, that's what, that's why there's such a disparity because if the composition of maize is small, then of course it's it's not going to be significant when it comes to um, looking at the inflation headline, inflation numbers, or food inflation numbers. Much uh, for giving us some that analysis. Shea Midiora is an analyst with Financial Derivatives Company of Nine. Uh, thank you so much for your thoughts. Thank you very much.